when charging uh, capacitors, be it electrolytic capacitors or non-electrolytic capacitors, there are two modes. And this is the first mode, charging an electrolytic or whatever capacitor, doesn't have to be an electrolytic capacitor. This phenomenon is, say, common with all, say, standard capacitors. So this is the way that a uh, capacitor normally acts when you uh, connect it to a voltage and current source. This is nonlinear. But when you connect a uh, capacitor of wh whatever kind to a constant current source, we have a linear build-up of the charge. So that's the first idea that I want to uh, say, um, tell about in this video. I wanted to make a, a test circuit for electrolytic capacitors. And my idea was uh, to make a multivibrator, an A-stable multivibrator, uh, that can charge a capacitor, perhaps via a constant uh, current source. Uh, that could be a next idea. Uh, but I of course needed, say, a kind of oscillator here. And my idea is and was to charge a capacitor and then suddenly discharge it and then measure the, say, the uh, voltage and current that is coming out of that electrolytic capacitor. This is only, say, a first idea. It works and it is a completely logical and uh, other circuit that you can find everywhere. It's the A-stable multivibrator and now it's made with two electrolytics. Here we have 220 microfarad and here we have approximately, as far as I know, uh, 100 microfarad. So that means that uh, this a stable multivibrator uh, slowly acts. Uh, some the first capacitor is charged and then discharged, and uh, the other capacitor is charged and discharged, etc., etc. And this process goes on and on. And the time during which which this all happens is set by the value of the capacitors and uh, also very important by the value of the base resistors. That's very important to tell. So perhaps I need in the future a somewhat other circuit to charge the, uh, the, cap and the electrolytic capacitor that has to be tested, but anyway. That's a second thought about this circuit. Uh, when you change the values here of this capacitor and that capacitor, uh, the LED will say uh, flicker much more uh, and then I mean in a, inside a certain time band say within a second or so you can go to other frequencies of that LED by changing the capacitors here but also important and that's what I wanted to show is when you change these resistors here they also the base resistors have a very very important uh, influence on the time during which the LED flickers and uh, of course 
not only during which the LED flickers, but say the complete frequency where it all works. Say you change this to 100 nanofarad, you are going to approximately 500 hertz. But now it is uh, 220 microfarad and 100 microfarad, etc. etc. And when you change these two values, you can also get to higher frequencies. Anyway, the idea was uh, to make um, an electrolytic capacitor tester, but uh, the first idea was to focus on how you can make a good properly working voltage supply with one of the uh, voltage regulators in the 7812 range. There are um, voltage regulators that work on 7815, 5 volt, maximum 5 volt, 7812, 12 volt out, 7815, 15 volt out, 7824, 24 volts out and they are very very common and cheap and easy to find. Here is my box of voltage regulators and you can surely see that I have quite a few of them both positive and neg negative uh, regulators and also they come in is a, in a tow tree mode uh, so th that they can handle a lot of heat when you mount it of course on a heat sink and then of course such a chip uh, can withstand say 1 ampere 2 ampere perhaps even 3 or 5 ampere when properly uh, cooled down on a, on a heat sink so, this is the box. I've ordered quite a few uh, 7812 regulators in the past. Anyway, um, what's important to tell about that regulator 7812 or whatever other uh, regulator in this family, so uh, to say 7824, etc., etc. Always use here a capacitor of 100 nanofarad to ground to prevent oscillations. Always use here, say, an input capacitor and an output capacitor. And uh, I've used here a 47 microfarad input capacitor. Of course, the uh, voltage to, uh, to which that capacitor can withstand must be. Uh, in relation to the voltage supply that this um, regulator can handle. And as far as I know for a 7812 that is approximately maximum 35 volts. But of course you can use here a voltage divider uh, to get that um, input voltage to the maximum input voltage, though there can be a higher voltage here when there is a voltage divider. And of course that also say uh, works when say not a high current is necessary. And in this case, in the case of my uh, multivibrator circuit, uh, no high current is necessary and then I mean no current is necessary in that first stage here the oscillator stage but when I uh, work this circuit out it could be that I need a quite good current to send into the electrolytic capacitor under test here so that uh, that capacitor is charged Within, within say a um, reliable time, not too long of course, and the idea is and was 
to shortcut that capacitor on a certain moment when it is completely charged and then let the charge flow away and then measure the charge that is flowing away and of course when an electrolytic capacitor is defective uh, no charge can be built up inside such an electrolytic and when it's shortcut the whole circuit will not work completely logical though I think uh, it will take quite a long time to develop this circuit further this is only the first step and perhaps I have to change say the frequency here uh, etc etc or make a switch say uh, that such a switch can align the, uh, the current that is sent into that electrolytic capacitor etc etc but the focus was more or less that was my idea uh, at least to focus on the power supply you can see it on the on the board it's uh, 7812 and there are 200 uh, nanofarad capacitors uh, like I showed in the schematic and also uh, this is interesting perhaps to show that I have bridged both electrolytics with a resistor and in fact there is also uh, that 0.1 microfarad capacitor that's also bridged here when you look at the schematic and here the same and a good idea is to when you want to use uh, different values of, of electrolytics at the input and the output to use this electrolytic higher and this electrolytic lower uh, perhaps the 7812 has say a kind of uh, internal circuit uh, that protects say current flowing back from the output to the input I don't know that but say it's a kind of general safety ID to get not into say certain troubles thanks for watching I hope I can finish this project if not no pain uh, in that case I have say uh, made a good uh, description about how to use such an 7 8 um, regulator and there are all seven there are also seven nine regulators they regulate in the negative lead in fact to exactly the same properties Thanks for watching.